of grayish. So one night I went over there on my bike and started and decided I was going to clean the bridge. So there's, there's a Tesco in the bike, um, just, just over one side of the bridge, and I went inside with a trolley and I filled the trolley with cleaning supplies, a sponge mop, a uh, bucket, cleaning liquid and several big bottles of water, and then I kind of draped this over my bike and wheeled it over the bridge. And I set about cleaning the base of the railings of the bridge. And so I'm going on Tesco, but no one was knowing, no one knew why I had all this stuff in my trolley, which felt quite kind of dangerous, you know, <laughs> it's going around and um, everyone's going to put my name. And when I got to the bridge, um, I don't know deliberately at the time when not many people will be around, it's quite late at night, and some people were still around, and a few people commented as to what I was doing. And after I've done a bit of this, I cleaned a certain section of the base of this bridge, the, the railings um, over the bridge, I um, packed up the stuff and I went home. So by this point, this bridge was sort of suddenly cleaner in this small area of it, and nobody would know why that was, and we had done it, and I thought it was quite fun, quite exciting as an idea. So I sat on this for a few days, and then I went back on my lunch break, and I took some photos of what I'd done, and what the results were, and I thought it would be fun to share these on Twitter, so that people could see what I'd been doing, um, pseudonymously, so under the pseudonym of Willie Roundsman, so that no one would know who was doing it, and that's kind of how I tend to be. So this is what the bridge looked like after I had cleaned it that first day. Um, you can see in the distance the bridge is, the, 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 base of the, the base of the railings is bright white and right near the camera, just at this side, I can't tell which side because I'm, I can't see anything. <laughs> so, it's, um, it's quite dirty. Um, so that, that was quite significantly brilliant, I thought. I did a bit more of this after this. Then I noticed that below the bridge, on, the, um, on one side of the bridge, there was a fence that was broken. And as far as I could tell, it had been broken for quite some time. Um, I thought I had to go and fix it. So I went over on my lunch break again and surreptitiously measured the fence. I measured the wood of this fence to find out what kind of wood I need to get. I went to build a merchant, bought some of this wood, um, two pieces of this wood in fact, um, and I cut it to size and I wheeled it over on my bike and I hid it behind the gate that was next to the fence around here somewhere. Um, and at some later point I came back with a hammer and nails and in public view, full public view, I started to set about fixing the fence. And that's what it looked like afterwards. So you can see I fixed three, three of the rails that were broken. But I'm quite pleased with this. I thought it went quite well. So after this, I tried some other kinds of repair. So I noticed that around, around the place there were various street signs that were just some letters that peeled off or they faded away and you couldn't really read what they said. So I started touching them up with a permanent marker, just with a black um, chalk marker, and then uh, paint them. And uh, that was quite fun. Uh, obviously it looked a bit strange, because it looked like I was doing graffiti or something. And another thing I did was cutting back on overgrown bushes. So here's a path, um, quite near the edge of Cambridge, and you can see on the left-hand side, left-hand side, the, um, the path is almost completely blocked by brambles. And as you get to the middle of the right-hand side, you can see that I've I can't like all those rambles, and now the park is completely clear. You can get past it. I'm standing in front of it, so you can't see it. <laughs> okay. uh, so that, I did quite a lot of this, I think. Um, after this, I got a bit more adventurous. So this is a fairly busy road in Cambridge, and there are two traffic islands in the middle of it, and on the traffic island there are some bollards. And the bollards have become very rusty. So I thought I would go and get some hand right, and a wire brush, and I would start to repaint these rusty bollards. And when I was doing this, I was spotted by somebody I knew. Um, so I had to explain to him next time I saw him <laughs> what I could do. So I was kind of rumbled. Um, I did a bit more of this. So this is the entrance to our local tip. And there's lots of rusty bollards again as before. Um, I spent a Saturday and Sunday morning climbing and repainting these bollards. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did afterwards. So by this point, I was getting quite brazen. So, I was doing this, I really had no permission at all from anybody. Um, I just turned up first thing on Saturday morning and started painting these products, and nobody said anything. <laughs> this, this, this stream of cars going past to get to the tip, because um, it was a very busy thing on Saturday morning, and nobody stopped me. I mean, occasionally people said you missed it, but no one stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite exciting to me. Um, another thing I did, um, a bit of this cleaning signs. So, here's a, here's a sign under a tree, you can't really see what it says. Um, cutting rhyme, so this would have after I cleaned it. Quite a lot there. Um, this is a stylish bench that I've had in Cambridge. It's made of 
areas, a lot of thick wooden slats and metal frame, and occasionally the wood gets rotten and it's that thick. So I thought I'd go out fixing these, and this is the second one I fixed. Um, so I went and bought some long bits of birch wood, and I sorted them to the right length, and I planed them to the right width and thickness, and I treated them with wood preservative, and then I painted them and drilled holes in the ends, and bolted them to the venturing. And I was pretty pleased with how this went. I've done a few of these. Um, the first one I did, I kind of used the wrong colour of wood, anyway. But uh, this one went pretty well. Actually, I fixed this bench several times, because over time, more of the old slats are broken, and I fixed those as well. This is a street sign where the end has snapped off. <laughs> so I went to another sign with the same letters on it somewhere in the way, and I traced the missing letters. <laughs> I wrote an aluminium sheet at home, which I managed to get some be thrown away at work, and I used a woodworking router to cut away the metal from between where the letters were to leave the raised letters like they were in the original sign. Then I painted them <laughs> black and white, and then screwed it in place. <laughs> It's not perfect. <laughs> 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 so from the start, I'm really focused on maintenance. So trying to restore things to their original design and not introducing my own designs into things. But after a while, I did start doing some guerrilla gardening. So here's a flower bed I planted by an underparting language and some lavender and some banana leaves. Actually, for a while, I did quite a lot of guerrilla gardening and became quite obsessed with it. Um, so let's have a look back at what I've been doing and think about it. Okay, so firstly, it's been great fun. Um, as I said at the beginning, this is really danger that I'm doing this thing and I shouldn't be doing this thing necessarily and maybe it's stopping me. Maybe it's a good thing. It's, it's quite exciting. Um, it's been quite good for my confidence as well because I've been surprised at how much I could get away with it. You know, just doing this stuff in public, in broad daylight like, most of the time. It's no high visitor or anything, so there's no kind of, um, I wasn't trying to take any kind of credible reason for doing things, I was just doing them. Um, it's been an opportunity to do all sorts of projects that I never would normally get to do. So obviously, the, um, I'm a bit, I've always been into, into DIY a little bit, but for example, something I never would normally get to do is uh, fixing a pothole in a little part that went through between a fence in Cambridge. There was um, a pothole right between the gap and the fence, where everyone had to walk and cycle through, so it was really annoying. So I went to a local trade shop and got a sack of cold lake asphalt that you can just uh, you can spray a primer and then pour it in and compact it down. I used a grease block for that. And it worked really well, but you never never want to get to do that kind of thing. Okay, another thing is not everything has been a success. So I tried to fix a brick wall where two bricks had fallen off. I tried to I bought some new bricks, I tried just to mortar them into place, but it was hopeless, so I didn't <laughs> that. Um, another thing that didn't really work very well was a cycle path south of Cambridge where there are stripes, covered stripes along the along mile of the cycle path that represent the basis of the human being. And I thought that it would be good to touch up the cracked bits. Some of the chips, some of the stripes had chipped away and were starting to go away completely. So I, I got some line marking paint in four colours and I started um, you know, masking the area and spraying to touch up the stripes. But the colour match wasn't great, and actually a member of the public, uh, well, a fellow member of the public, I'm not sure, the part of it just said, you know, this doesn't look great, can you stop doing it? And he was right, so I did. <laughs> okay, another thing is that what everything has lost it. So, um, I said about the touching up street signs with a paint marker. Actually, that didn't really last very well. The, the weather kind of faded it fairly quickly and it went back to its old condition. And another thing that hasn't really lasted is the gardening. So I got a bit set, as I said. I spread myself quite thinly. I planted all over the place. I didn't really have the ability to follow through with maintenance of that. So I'm tending it. So that, that kind of curved in this repair. Um, so I've got two big questions at this point. And one is, is this probably actually a good idea? <laughs> Um, and second one, so can I recommend it to other people? So, here's a good idea. Well, maybe. So, I'm hoping that this is doing stuff that's slipping through the cracks that might be too small for anyone to bother uh, scheduling or recording. So maybe I'm saving someone some effort. Maybe I'm making it more efficient by doing things that uh, no one else would be doing, or that would be too expensive for the answer to do that. On the other hand, maybe it's not a good idea. So, obviously I could get into trouble, I haven't yet, um, somehow, um, but someone could get into trouble for doing this. Could, you, could cause, you could cause damage, so when you're fixing something, 
Maybe you did it wrong, maybe that was damaged yet. You can help yourself or somebody else. That's quite a scary thought. Um, you can have a conflict with official maintenance. So, for example, you might not repair something as well as the council was going to, and they would have done if you hadn't repaired it already. So maybe it would have been better if I had you, know, you can see how you might be causing the, re the professional maintenance not to happen a little bit. Um, another thing is you could just cause yourself frustration because you might fix the bench and then three weeks later the council replaces the bench and that's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's a bit disappointing. So uh, you can never really predict that's going to happen. So it's inherently a bit chaotic. And actually another reason why maybe not is that around where I am the council is actually pretty good at keeping on top of stuff and keeping it looking tidy. Um, I think increasingly so actually. So that would recommend it to other people. Well, I think picking up litter is pretty obviously a good thing and I should do more of that myself. Um, cleaning bushes, well, actually the council where I am have invited, um, invited people to help with it, and it uh, seems helpful, and um, cleaning signs, that sounds good. Growing gardening is probably, probably okay, um, I think people appreciate it when they see nice flowers around, as long as you follow through with it, like they didn't really. Um, <laughs> beyond that, I would say, do this only at your own risk, <laughs> um, I don't think I'm in trouble for recommending that someone do this. Um, all right. <laughs> So, I have been the brother around some. Have you got any questions? I'm not sure. Have you got time for any questions? Go for it. Okay, yeah. questions anyway. I can't see you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> questions? Maybe one of you. Go for it. Uh, I was just wondering, like, if you're, I guess, encouraging you know, you doing this is going to encourage other people to do it, mm. what do you think about if people don't have? Uh, the necessary skills to do what you're doing. I'm thinking, like, there's that famous picture in Spain where someone like, <laughs> yeah. it and went yeah. terribly wrong. <laughs> like, you know, is that a worry? Yes, I, that's always that's kind of. So I don't. I'm not claiming that I've got huge skills myself. I, I try and make sure that I research things I'm going to do, and I'm quite careful about not doing things that, I, like, that seem like a, a risk. Um, but okay, so as I said, something has gone wrong. But broadly speaking, I'm quite cautious actually, um, and I have been quite worried that some that someone else would try and do this in a kind of gung ho way and do stuff that they might get into trouble for, or that they might cause damage to something else, like, like the, um, the mural that you're talking about. Um, so that's why I've always been quite hesitant to recommend this to anybody else, um, which is kind of why I wanted to put that, that stuff in at the end. Um, yeah, I haven't really got an answer, I'm afraid. Any, yeah, go for it, Chris. Um, I was going to ask, um, so with uh, council cuts, yeah. um, and uh, I'm from Edinburgh where um, perhaps the council aren't quite as, um, as, as effective as uh, looks like you, um, they are in Cambridge. Yeah. Um, there, there is a sort of um, a need for sometimes uh, some of these things that drop through the cracks. Do mm. you think you'll be you know, the sort of the vanguard of a, of a movement? Like, or like, um, oh. like I, I, I think, um, you know, someone who works for an organisation, I feel like we do similar things in, in less... Um, Less of a sort of uh, isolated way, and mm. I, I feel like this is really inspiring for me. So thank you. But do you think there's a movement? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not kind of that many people doing this kind of thing. But there's loads of people who do litter picking. Um, there's people who do um, like pruning of bushes and stuff. I don't know much about people doing like sporadic painting. Um, but I did get the idea of doing a bridge originally from seeing some people cleaning another bridge somewhere else. So I don't know. Um, I think. Um, I think. Since I started, the council have probably, the, when, when I started, um, in fact, a friend who spotted me doing bollards, he used to work for the council and he, uh, you know, in one of the finance positions, and he said, We don't have any money, and what you're doing is actually really helpful. But I get the impression that things aren't quite so dire as they were then, so maybe that's why things look um, like they're being on, kept more on top of now. I don't know. Um, possibly, yeah. As I said, I'm a bit hesitant to recommend it too much because. <laughs> I don't want people to get themselves into trouble. <laughs> yeah. okay. We have a couple more super quick questions. I'm going to go front first. Yeah, can you say a little bit more about the sort of interactions you have with people while you're doing the work? Like, are they are people just confused, or do people find it inspiring? Do they want to know more about what you're up to? Or? <laughs> so some people, loads of people just ignore you completely. Um, some people make sarcastic comments like you missed a bit, which is quite funny, I guess. Um, <laughs> I can't actually miss a bit when you said that. Um, uh, I'm not sure you're on that, but I think there was one time when I, I was um, doing some like some bins, and you saw the bin at the beginning of this um, slideshow. Slide slide um, there were four bins that I spent quite a long time over a few weeks repairing, like, repainting these bins, and the bench was like with them. And 
there were some people who hung around all the time um, drinking, and after a while they got to know who I was, and I kind of had to, I said I was a volunteer, but I didn't say nothing more than that. <laughs> anyway. Final question. Um, one of the sub-themes of this uh, meeting so far has been the need for for systemic sustained operations. Yeah. So how do we move you from an individual uh, guerrilla groundsman to creating a um, vast cadre of groundsmen uh, operating either surreptitiously or with or with or with, or with counsel? How do you how do you institutionalize yourself? Hmm. I guess I've always been a bit resistant to being institutionalized. <laughs> That's a great question. I was going to say, I think we should talk about that in the pub tonight. I think that starting a movement is not necessarily something that these, I don't know, maybe you don't want to start a movement, but I think let's talk about it in the pub, because it's one thing I've been wondering about as well, how we can start to move some of these things to Chris's point as well, you know, to be perhaps on a slightly more formal basis without becoming too heavily formalised and build a bit of momentum. Can I but, just say something? Yeah. It does sort of happen in, in the transition town movement. Oh. So in Lewis and various places where they've done guerrilla gardening yeah. and then maintained it and then in the end the council were well, the council initially very resisted mm. and in the end they embraced it. So oh, cool. okay. yeah. yeah, that's okay. Just the thought, just so you know, I'll pass this around, but this is an article um, that one of our sponsors, I think George maybe, has brought for us. This is an article about undercover restorers fixing Paris's landmark <coughs> clocks. Oh, this is gorilla yeah. fixing yeah. Paris. This is from 2007. Anyway, I'm going to pass it around so you can pass it around so everyone gets a chance to look at that. It would be awesome. But anyway, thank you so much, Gorilla Brownstone, for joining us. Thank you.